If you haven't seen my overview video on this bike, you should really go and watch that first because I've just bought this off eBay and I'm pretty stoked about it. It's my Cafe Racer project. This is the first start video, but you already knew that from the thumbnail, didn't you? When you get an abandoned project like this, you always have a suspicion that the seller got to this stage and then found some major gremlin in the engine, you know, a broken conrod or something stupid like that. This does turn over, but I'm still nervous about what I might find because he did say he had tried to get it running, but had actually never succeeded. Whenever I start one of these projects, the first thing I really like to know is if the engine will run and if it will select gears. Because if it won't do those things, then you really haven't got a bike that's worth doing anything with. Um, I bought this fully expecting the engine to be broken. Now, it turns over on the kickstart, so I know that it's got a bit of compression. So I'm really hopeful I should be able to get this going. Now I always follow a reasonably set routine. Now I've written this up I think on the Spanner Ash blog so you might want to look that up. I'll mention it in the description below. I always check first of all is there oil. If there's not got clean oil in it then I would not even think of starting an engine. Next thing I go on to is check the spark plugs and check that the actual timing is giving it a spark near enough where it should do. Now once I get to that point and I know that it's got a spark, I know the plugs are in and the plugs are okay and it feels like it's got compression, I'll try and start it with a little bit of brake cleaner just to see if it'll pop and bang. If it does, I know I'll move on to the next step. Next one would be the carbs. Now the carbs on this are actually very clean but I'm going to whip the float bolts off and just check them make sure that there's no hidden gremlins in there. If they're okay I'll put them back on and then I'll try it with actual petrol through the carbs. My expectation would be the carbs will leak like a sieve. Might have to do something with the seals but if they don't I'll try and start it then with fuel in it. Right then let the dog see the rabbit. Let's go and have Now that I've done the oil and it's all good to go, let's check the plugs. Tighten the plugs up, make sure the plug leads are on. So next thing to do is to actually make sure that the timing is giving a spark at the time we want it come to connect up the battery and it would appear that this is the only neutral wire for the battery. Now when you're cranking the engine over there's a fair bit of current goes through so this isn't big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a really nice neutral wire earth strap to go between there and this point here. So I'm going to do that next before I actually try to get a spark. Because I hang on to a lot of things I've actually got some uh, appropriate wire that's already got one of the correct ends on. I've cut it down to the right length and I've got another of the right kind of connector. Now it's got some power, I can then check the timing. Now, usually I would clip this to one of the springs on the uh, points, but there aren't any, so I can't do that. 
So I'm going to use the 1 and 4, and it's the white wire, and I know it comes up here. I'm going to connect this to the white here. Let me just... like that and find a reasonable earth for this which will be that one so all I need to do now is turn the engine over when the light comes on it tells me that it would be firing I want it to be firing with a diner at the advanced timing marks I'll show you a picture of them I'm going to turn the engine until the right timing mark is in the right place which is there now I'm going to undo these yeah. turn the ignition on again for a diner you need the timing marks set at the advanced position which are those two marks there and you need the actual advanced retard mechanism forward for the light to come on so if the light just comes on when the engine's turning over with the advanced retard pushed forward like that you've got it in the right place it's a bit of a faff and you always seem to end up at the end of the ex uh, at the wrong end of the uh, adjustment it's really annoying i've got this set now when it's fully advanced it's coming on at the advanced position on the plate at the back i'm good to go with this i think the engine should get a spark now at the right time so i'm just going to tighten these up leave that as is, I'll get a plug, check that it does spark, then I can try it with a bit of brake clean and see if I get some pops and bangs. Let's just take number one spark plug back out so I can confirm I have got a spark. Brilliant, lovely strong spark. Let's just whip that back in now. I think the ignition side of it is going to be okay. I've not fully looked at the carbs yet, but what I want to see is if I get a few pops and bangs using some brake cleaner. So I'm going to open the choke, put a bit of brake cleaner in it, turn it over and let's see if I get anything at all. having a go. It's definitely popping and banging, yeah. but it's not turning over fast enough. Is it in gear and it's turning the wheel and the wheel's giving enough drag to slow the starter motor down? Bloody good point. Seems like we've not got quite enough power here to get it turning over, so let's see what I can do about that. I've swapped it to a non good battery now, let's see what happens. It's 
little bit, yeah. But it is firing. Close than that. Go on. I'm going to spray it whilst oh. it's going to okay. it's atomized. but not quite as many as I would have hoped for made me realize I didn't check the two and the three timing was spot on I just assumed it might be right from the factory from Dyna what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to adjust where the pickups are on the back plate because I'm right at the end of the uh, adjustment I'm going to adjust that first and then I'm going to adjust two and three to make sure they're both absolutely spot on it might make no difference whatsoever, but it'll keep me entertained while I'm thinking about it. On this Dyna system, as you can see I've maxed out the adjustment here. What I'm going to do is move the plate around so that it's somewhere in the middle of the adjustment. Now besides that, you can adjust these independently by undoing those. So I'm going to put that in the middle of the adjustment, get this one right, then check the two and the three, and then hopefully it'll put it in a better position for starting. I didn't check this the first time round. First of all, I'm going to set the timing mark to where it should be. Now I think that that is good. Next, I'm going to undo these again. Move this plate so I've got some, not necessarily perfect, but some adjustment. Slacken off this one. So what I'm looking for now, I've got the mark set right, I've got some adjustment in here, I'm looking for this light coming on. So I need to put the in advance and move this slightly. Oops, there it's on. There it's off. There it's just come on. Just gone off. Just come on. Right, I'll tighten it at that and then I'll go on to do that one. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Timing marks spot on. So what I'll do now is I'll move it round so I've got two and three. I'll swap 
this onto the wire from this one which is black I think I might just be able to do this okay advanced so what we want is the light just coming on go with that. Let me tighten it up. Right. Now, I am happy these are set perfectly. Let's see if it'll start again. It'll run on brake cleaner, still don't know if it'll run on petrol. The carbs are a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm going to whip the float bolts off just to have a look. Um, I suspect they're going to be okay. The carbs look really clean. Um, do that, put it back together and then I can connect up a, an auxiliary fuel tank and we'll see if we can get it running on petrol. Let's get these float bolts off. Looks absolutely clean in there. Right, that's clean. I'll just whip off the other three and have a quick check. And that's as much as I'm going to look at with these for now before I put some fuel on them. Not ideal, but hey, blood donor. Laugh as much as you like, it's the best <laughs> I can do. <laughs> You're a right mess. You can never have enough garden implements. Now my expectation is, I'll turn this on and fuel will leak out of the carbs. I won't be disappointed when that happens because it always does. I just need to grab hold of my float valve releaser. And here we go, let's put some fuel in.
but that's almost a miracle. No leak yet. Likelihood is the float valves will be uh, blocked up so it's not going in. However, it does appear to have gone from there. I'd say that was a success. It won't run very well when this nut drops off here. <laughs> right, let's get that tightened up. That's the wrong nut on there, I know that, because it'll never catch on to the self-locking part, but I'll just tighten it enough for now. been very successful. Found a couple of issues straight away. There's a little bit of an oil leak at the front. I'm not sure where it's from but it doesn't look like it be anything much. Um, seems to start fine when it's on fuel. I can't believe the carbs are not leaking. So that tells me that as far as the engine's concerned we've got a going concern. Next thing I need to do is to start thinking about checking out the gearbox and having a look at the clutch to see what's going on there. So I'll probably do that in the next video. Thanks very much for watching and if you enjoy this kind of project and want to follow the rest of our Cafe Racer build, why not subscribe? You could also go and look at some of our back catalogue of CB750 videos that we've done. Anyway, thank you very much.